This gargantuan catfish has 16 times the normal amount of radiation. Wolves are forming to fight cancer causing radiation and animals once thought extinct are now roaming the land freely. The Chernobyl exclusion zone has become a haven for animals whose populations just continue to grow and that's not even mentioning all the bizarre mutations caused by the radiation. These are unbelievable Chernobyl creatures that won't stop growing due to radiation. A recent study has looked into the wolves of Chernobyl and there were some very interesting finds, like the possibility that they've developed resistances to cancer. Now this sounds pretty nuts because you'd think it would be the exact opposite. I mean with all the cancer causing radiation, you'd think the wolves would be suffering from cancer not becoming immune to it. But Dr. Kara Love, an evolutionary biologist and ecotoxiologist at Princeton University has found quite the opposite. She along with a team of researchers headed to Chernobyl in 2014 and placed radio collars on a number of wolves to track their movements. The collars gave the team real time measurements of where where the wolves were and how much radiation they were being exposed to. They also took samples of their BLOOD to analyze. And the study found that the wolves were being exposed to six times the daily legal safety limit of radiation per day. The wolves seemed to have altered immune systems similar to people undergoing radiation therapy for cancer. And there were parts of their genes that seemed to have built a resistance to this increased cancer risk. Now unfortunately the past few years haven't really been ideal for continuing these studies for obvious reasons, but hopefully they can start diving into this more soon because the research could assist in cancer treatment for humans, which would be amazing. This is Jeremy Wade, host of Animal Planet's River Monsters, and he's holding a really big catfish which he caught in the Chernobyl power plant cooling pond, which is home to massive sized catfish which have become a bit of a a tourist attraction. Wade stated that this particular fish here was 16 times more radioactive than normal, but as big as these catfish are, their size may not actually have to do with the radiation at all. Now, while there may be mutations and defects in some of these catfish, the larger than average size is more to do with the fact that they're at the top of the food chain here. There's just no fish hunting them. And with no competition for food and plenty of it to eat, they grow pretty big. Plus people have been flocking to the area to feed them, so that definitely helps as well. And they're reproducing at high rates and living nice long lives from the looks of it. But hey, they're still radioactive, so even though they do seem perfect for a nice seafood fry up, that is still highly, highly advised against. Once on the verge of extinction, a wild species of horse native to Asia called the Taki horse are now thriving in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. 30 of these horses were reintroduced to the area in 1998 and they've adapted remarkably well to their new environment. In the early days, scientists were a bit concerned about how these horses would cope in such a harsh, contaminated environment, but over time, it became clear that they were managing to survive, but not without some consequences. One of the noticeable effects has been on their growth. While they're not necessarily growing uncontrollably, there are subtle signs that radiation has impacted their health and their development. For example, some of these horses have had stunted growth or issues with their hooves, which might be caused by the increased radiation exposure. For the most part though, they're doing pretty well. Their population has expanded and considering they were basically extinct by the 20th century, that's pretty good. Out of all the animals now flourishing in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, the ones with the highest level of radiation are wild boars. But why? Well, it turns out it mostly has to do with what they eat. Not only do these boars feed on plants and insects that have been contaminated with radiation, but they also eat a lot of deer truffles, a type of mushroom which they dig up from the ground. And of course, a lot of radioactive material accumulates in the soil. So these boars are just soaking up radiation, which has led to some pretty noticeable effects. They've been seen with deformities and health problems like strange growths and tumors. The radiation messes with their cells, leading to these weird and often unhealthy growth patterns. They might not be growing bigger in a normal sense, but their bodies are showing signs of stress and mutation. The high levels of radiation affect their immune systems, making them more susceptible to diseases and infections. So while they are surviving, they may not be thriving as much as some of the other animals in the area. Moving on to a much smaller animal now, mice. These little critters are everywhere in Chernobyl and they've become the focus 
for a lot of scientists studying radiation in the CEZ. They're usually used in experiments because they breed quickly and have relatively short lifespans. So it makes observing the effects easier, unfortunately for them. And in Chernobyl, mice have shown some pretty strange changes because of the radiation. For starters, their growth patterns are all over the place. Some mice have had stunted growth, others seem to grow abnormally large in certain areas of their bodies. Essentially, the radiation interferes with the mice's DNA, leading to all sorts of odd and sometimes, sadly, harmful physical changes. Researchers have also found that these mice have a higher rate of cancer and other diseases. The radiation messes with their cells, making it harder for their bodies to stay healthy. And what's really scary is that some of these issues are then passed down to their offspring, creating a sort of ongoing cycle of problems. But even still, they've managed to adapt in their own way. I mean, maybe they're not thriving as well as they would be if the area wasn't full of radioactive fallout, but they're still in an environment where humans aren't roaming around. So they're living. There's a lot of them and their population just continues to grow. There are tons of birds in the Chernobyl exclusion zone as well, but they also have a lot of defects. From 1991 to 2006, studies of barn swallows in the exclusion zone revealed some serious issues. A lot of them were found to have deformed beaks, albinistic feathers, meaning they were unusually pale or even white. Now, this not only makes them more visible to predators, but it can also affect their ability to regulate their body temperature. Tail feathers are another problem. Instead of being straight and sleek, many of these birds have bent or twisted tail feathers, which can affect their flying. And it's not just their appearance, that's affected, their air sacs, which help them breathe, are often deformed as well. And birds in the exclusion zone seem to have fewer chicks that survive to adulthood compared to those in less contaminated areas. Studies have also shown that these birds often have smaller brains and malformed sperm. Bison. These impressive creatures have been roaming the exclusion zone for years. European bison are the largest land mammals in Europe, and they've had to adapt to a very different kind of wilderness in Chernobyl. But these animals seem to be flourishing even though they were exposed to high levels of radiation through the plants that they eat. Some of them have seen some strange health issues like your typical growths and tumors, deformities in their hooves, but the bison population in Chernobyl is pretty stable. It's almost like it's safer for these animals to be in a place with no people and higher amounts of radiation than in an area with little to no radiation and humans walking around and yelling and farting and leaving their Dorito bags everywhere. What would you choose if you were an animal? Higher radiation, no people, more people, no radiation. The lynx population has exploded in Chernobyl. Or maybe it makes more sense to say that it just formed. See, before the disaster, it was very rare to see lynx in the area. As stated by biologist Valeri Yurko, lynx would show up sometimes, but because the area was so densely populated, they would never stay. In the years since the disaster in 86, elk and boar populations have grown. There are way more deer than there were before. So with all this food to hunt and no human interference, more predatory animals like the lynx have moved into Chernobyl and the areas surrounding it. And they hunt differently too. There are a lot more opportunistic and bold because they're not worrying about hunting animals like ducks that hang out in more open areas because they just aren't concerned about being spotted and hunted by people. Typically, lynx would hunt in more forested areas where the trees offer some protection. And that's just not the case when it comes to Chernobyl. Along with lynx, brown bears have also started moving into the exclusion zone, which they hadn't called home for over a century. So what's going on with these bears? Well, they're big, they're hungry, which means they need a lot of food. The exclusion zone, with its overgrown vegetation and all the wildlife, just makes for plenty of foraging opportunities. Bears are opportunistic feeders, so they take advantage of the environment, eating everything from berries to small animals. And even with the radiation, bears seem to be adapting well. They've been spotted roaming across the zone, forming territories and hunting in the area. Finally though, how could we not talk about all the green stuff, the flora? It's doing great for the most part. Nowhere is this more immediately noticeable than in Pripyat, the ghost town now being completely overtaken by nature. In the years since the disaster, the area around Chernobyl has transformed 
into a very unique kind of wilderness. The plants have been free to grow as much as they want with no human interference and it's created all these new habitats for animals. Trees, bushes, vines, weeds, it's all spreading across the streets. It's growing over buildings and the insides of the old apartments. Nature is taking over every nook and cranny of the city and that's pretty cool. The way wildlife has adapted and thrived after something as disastrous as this really goes to show how resilient nature is. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.